Hi, everybody. I have a wonderful group with me today, three wonderful women um, who many of you know. First of all, Eileen Davidson is here. You know Hi, her. everybody. Daytime Emmy winner, author, producer, uh, writer, and Judith Chapman, you know her. And we have with us Kim Walsh, uh, director and producer and the president of the Palm Springs Women in Film. Thank you, Kim, for being here. I'm so and, happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. And Eileen, why don't we talk? Because we, what this is all about is bringing your original book and all those series of soap mystery books that you had done right. several years ago to life. And you guys, uh, gals, are contemplating a six episode series, or we'll see where that goes, uh, starting with Dial M for Murder. So Eileen, right. tell me a little bit about how you've decided to kind of take it from novel to a screen. Um, well, I was approached a few years ago to adapt it to a screen. So I, it's been on my mind for a while. Everybody that's read it seems to think it's kind of like a perfect fit. And Kim and I met uh, actually many, many years ago, but we really met when uh, she was a producer on my husband, Vince Van Patten's film, Seven Days to Vegas. And then um, we got to know each other better through that. And then she asked me to to star in one of the short films that she was doing for P. Swift, which is Palm Springs Women in Film and Television. And it was a great, great piece called Aftermath. And then we got to talking and what's what kind of happened is that um, Palm Springs Women in Film, P. Swift is now producing short films. And I was just wondering if they'd be interested in, in maybe doing something a bit bigger. And it's kind of a perfect fit because it uh, this was written, the screenplay was written by me and my niece, Anna Marie Davidson. Um, it's going to be produced now by Palm Springs Women in Film and Television. I am co-directing it. It is a very woman forward script, very strong female roles, such as Judith Chapman, the role she's playing is terrific. And um, that's kind of how it all came about. So here we are, we're on the journey. We had a table read at my house and Donna, uh, Donna Mills is attached and we're going. We're beyond contemplating. <laughs> Going. Going. Yes. And you know this, I remember this and it was, it, there's, there's a lot of funny parts to the story. You kind of took real life soap operas and, you know, kind of riffed on Kinda. what you experienced <laughs> and did a torque on it, right? Yes. And what I thought. So what do you think is like the, some of the funnier moments that you have? In oh here? my God, there's probably, I don't know. The whole thing is kind of like jam packed with that. But uh, one of the, the things that happened to me and that I put into the book is when I went into the guard gate a few years ago with no makeup on, it's early in the morning and I'm going into work and I don't have my pass, which happens. And the gate at the guard was like, you can't get in without a pass. And I'm like, okay, but I've, I've really worked here for a super long time, but I, I get it. They're like, well, I'm sorry, you still have to have a pass. I'm like, okay. I go, well, I don't have a pass. Here's my driver's license. And then this person calls upstairs and says, she says she's Eileen Davidson. She's on the young and the restless. I think she's an extra. <laughs> Really? That's what it's come to, people. Um, so I kind of put that in the in the book as, as well. And Judith, you decided to uh, join Eileen on this project. Well, well it, yeah, there's a little backstory to that. Um, <laughs> then Eileen was there, but Kim called me one day and said that um, Palm Springs women, women in Film were having their first get together, their first mixer after a year and a half being absent. And they wanted me to be their guest of honor and they wanted to honor me and my work in film and theater and everything. So of course I was flattered. And then she said, you know, Eileen's got this little project. And she said, would you like to be in it? And I, I said, anything with Eileen. I said, I've loved working That's with her sweet. for all these years, off and on, on Young and the Restless. And, and I read the first book and was just like chuckling to myself because because of the backstory of all that. So, and Eileen was at the was at the event promoting it. So I, without having read the script, I'd read the first book, but without having read the script, I said, absolutely anything to work with Kim, anything to work with um, with Eileen. And then I read the script and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did after the table read because I did an audition. They just offered it to me, which is always flattering. But I went up to I went up to Eileen. And I said, you know, if you want to change your mind about me being in this, which I was so insane because <laughs> I mean, she okay. is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm blushing now because I always knew that Judith would just shine in this role. It's such. I mean, I feel like it's a fantastic role, and not everybody can play this role because there's drama involved, but there's also humor. 
and it, it has to hit you know every single note which she does beautifully i knew she would i just knew she would you so, it was great it was great and to hear to hear the things you know actors we all work on our writing we all work on our things privately at home and we only hear those voices in our head and then eventually when you have a room full of people and you hear it and hear it come to life and take shape it's it's very exciting and you play, yeah. you play, you play Luann. Press. I play Luann, Is that who's a, a loving mother, a devout fan of, of Emmy. But the Emmanuel, mother, and Emmy. She has the best Emmy. role. Yeah. Huh? Is she the mother of the young lover of, of M's? Yeah, so you know that. She's screwing my son. So, you know, there is, there is that. <laughs> It's just one. Oh, don't edit that, Michael. Do not edit that. Don't edit that. It's just uh, one yeah, time. So as, as much as she loves, as, as much as she loves um, M's character on the soap opera, she's very much uh, loves her boy. Very protective. She's a super um, fan. She's a oh, super Judith, fan. Judith plays she's a just, super fan. Oh my God, that's what amazing. amazing. Yeah. Who, it's amazing. It's amazing. So Kim, talk to me about the organization and like, you know, what you, what you're doing with it and, and how this uh, potential series comes into play. Well, we, I took office a year and a half ago and at the, at my sort of swearing in ceremony, I asked everybody that was there. I said, how many filmmakers do we have here? And, you know, couple dozen people raised their hand and I said why haven't we ever made a film together so we decided we were going to do that and we organized this filmmakers lab and we got together and one of our members thought of this story idea somebody else wrote it we were going to go produce it and then COVID happened so we put everything on hold and then in October we just said you know what we don't know when this is going to get better so let's just go do it and we put all the COVID precautions in place, everybody got tested. We filmed downtown, it was fabulous. And then we had an idea for another one and we said, let's go make the other one too. So one's a comedy, one's a drama. Eileen starts in the drama. And so that kind of kicked us off. And then, um, so we decided to keep going and we're starting an interview show called PS After Dark with Tristan Rogers. And then, um, as Eileen said, we decided a series would be really fun. And we're going to film it in Palm Springs or all over the Coachella Valley. And we're going to utilize a lot of our local talent. All of our members of the Filmmakers Lab are going to produce it. And we're actually teaching them all how to take a project from development to distribution. I just love this so, so gonna, much. I, I love the whole thing so much. Yes, it's so they're going to work on this right from beginning to end, is what you're saying, Kim. Yep, we have a filmmakers lab, and all of our members are crew members. So we have production <laughs> designers, prop people, craft services. Um, it's kind of great, and they're all learning a craft as well. So we're building our own film crew. Local talk, film talk crew. about women forward. Exactly. Yeah. It's, so, it's a great combination. So Eileen, uh, Donna Mills is playing your mother in this. Is yes. that correct? So Donna was so Donna was like on board to you reached out to her and was she uh, well Kim, you know, Kim is the, the producer with the most is here. She knows people, she's get things, she gets things done. People have a lot of faith in her. That is a big component. She's got a great reputation, people really like her. And because of that, you know, people are open to hearing what she has to say. She said. I have this project, Eileen Davidson wrote this, blah, blah, blah. And Donna read it and loved it. You know, again, when my niece and I wrote, wrote this um, script based off the books that Bob Brandisi and I wrote years ago, um, we wanted to make every role that matter. We wanted each role to be fun and interesting in its own right. Um, so there's no small roles here. And certainly for Donna, the role is terrific. She's an ex homicide detective. She looks like Donna, she's gorgeous and she looks sweet and, but she's hard as nails and she's tough. And I, she loved the role too. So, you know, it's so flattering to hear that from fantastic actors like Judith and Donna. 
Amazing. And and Donna was going to be with us, but she was off filming today. So I just wanted to say that's the reason she wasn't here. She's doing another project right now. Um, so Kim, what what is if if uh, fans, because a lot of fans are going to really love this, uh, they can donate to the filmmakers lab, right? Yeah, they're actually donating to the organization. It's a hundred percent tax write-off because we're a nonprofit. And that will help fund all of these educational programs like Filmmakers Lab. And we're going to be teaching people how to make movies. So there are various levels of donations available and they can go on the Filmmakers Lab donation page and they'll see all of the perks they get. You can be an associate producer, co-producer, executive producer, come to the set. We have lots of perks like have lunch with Eileen Davidson and the cast and um, a lot of, you know, other perks like sign posters and come to the rap party and screenings and whatever. So it's all on that uh, website. Great. And I was going to say uh, your goal, do you have a financial goal you'd like to meet to try well, to? We, yeah, we do for this $5 million. Five million dollars. Five million. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very expensive. This is like um, kidding. We're kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> we are kidding. Well, you know, the fundraising is ongoing, but for this particular project, we need to raise $300,000. So um, we're going to work hard and make sure, you know, everybody gets involved and, and raise, raise the money. We'll, we'll make it happen, but, but it's going to be an ongoing filmmakers lab. So the goal for this one is 300,000, but the goal forever is as much as five million dollars. Got it. And is June it's a write-off, everybody. It's a write-off. Well, what's what's good about what's different about this? You know, there's different yes. funding campaigns, and I think this is great that this is a, a write-off. It's a nonprofit. It's mm -hmm. it's for a very cool, you know, cause. Not even a cause, but a great educational program right. and all of that. And I think that's what the twist is here. That it, you know, a lot of times there's these crowdfunding campaigns and whatnot, but this actually has a greater good to it, I think, other than just, you know. Well, you know, Michael also, I mean, Palm Springs, you know, I live out here in the Tulis and we all live out here, but what's been happening? I mean, I've been, been involved with the theater a lot out here in the past decades, couple of three decades. But this town, this valley is growing. I mean, look at the film festival. I mean, the film festival, of course, but Coachella, the music festivals, we are so growing. They're getting ready in Palm Desert to build this however many seat, Kim, I don't know, you know, stadium. I mean, this place is just exploding. And when Kim and I were driving to LA the other day with Janice, who works for the city, who hand, gives out the permits for us to be able to do things. And, uh, you know, but there's always been talk and I bet it'll happen, Kim. And you would be a mover and shaker in this. If there's so much open land out here, it's perfect for building sound stages. Yeah. We've got no pollution. We've got no noise pollution, occasional plane once in a while, but. And so the, the growth potential is so extraordinary here. And so b creating this work by Peace Swift members and producing films down here, big films is wonderful. Yeah, we get a lot of big films that come through. Mm -hmm. Olivia Wilde's film just filmed out there. Um, I mean, who doesn't want to be in Palm Springs? So it's nice conducive to filmmaking. We're close to LA uh, without all the traffic. But I mean, there are some things we can't do, of course. You know, we don't have a big skyscraping landscape, but um, it's yeah. called green screen. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, Eileen, what other favorite parts of your book do you see coming to life here in, the, in this project? I mean, there's so many funny things the Emmy thing that she presents at the Emmys, right? And the guy. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it starts off with a bang. We hope to grab people right away. We're at the daytime Emmys and we can't find her co-star. And it's somebody that she had a relationship with. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm in the middle of this table read. I was like, what have I done? I wrote this and like, now I've got to play it. Oh my God. And my husband was reading, I was like, oh my God, crazy. But anyway, he yes. Ever, so, he ever read before? Did he know this? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. He's helping us out in the table read because we haven't attached too many actors because we want to wait and see, you know, <laughs> who we might want to plug in where. But we, I think we're going to do it with mostly daytime actors, but not necessarily. But yeah, the first murder opens up with M Can't Find Her co-star, the character. 
They don't know where he is. He's co he's co presenting with her. They don't know where the heck he went. He wasn't at rehearsal. What happened to him? And then she, so she has to present by herself, and she's blood is coming from the ceiling. He doesn't know what it is. It's dropping on her, and she's like, "What is this?" And then she looks up. His dead body is unfurled, th falls down from the rafters on stage in front of her, and because they were involved, she is the first murder sus uh, the suspect. So she has to clear her name. Do we and like her on for a grand journey? <laughs> <laughs> is she our heroine or is she? Oh is yeah, you know, it's kind of like a murder she wrote. Diva or is she? Not at all, not at all. It's more like a, it's a murder she wrote meets soap opera. So it's like, it's the same kind of feel, you know, only it's more modern, edgier, sexier, funnier. Very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got the love scenes and you got the actor who's opening up. I don't movie. have any love <laughs> scenes. And you're like, you know, no tongue. You, there's no tongue. This is the end, which I've had to have that conversation before. Um, so <laughs> oh, it's all that kind of stuff. Thing. Yeah. 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 So, Judith, how was Eileen at the table read? Was she good? Oh, for God's sakes. Good. I think she did her homework a little bit. <laughs> I get very annoyed with soap actors who can't spend a half an hour the night before to look at their lines to get familiar so they can do, bring something to the table. No, Eileen, I said, I took it sight unseen. I hadn't read the script. And I said, anything with Eileen Davidson, oh, anything nice. with Kim. Well, you know, it's funny you said that I was on the red carpet. And she's a wonderful hostess, too. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, having us all there, taking over her poor house. <laughs> she wouldn't let any of yeah, us wear cool. shoes, though, which I love because I'm the same way in my home. And I was oh, like, good. yeah, that is good. I had booties, though, for people. <laughs> That's what I, was on the, I was on the red carpet at the daytime Emmys. One of the things I had to do was ask the daytime actors, cold, you know, do a cold read for these promos we were doing. Like, they didn't have a script. They didn't have anything to hold up. There was no prompter. So I'm like, you know, please say, stay tuned on the da, da, da. And everybody, it was flubbed it, right? Oh. And so all the producers who don't know daytime like I do were like, these people know millions of dialogue and they can do it like that. Why can't they do a thing? You know, it was an interesting thing to see that you guys work so fast on dialogue so quickly at such a pace. But then when you're given something verbally, it was more challenging than not. It's a, it's a talent to be able to do that. Just have it come trippingly off the tongue and improvise and blah, 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 right. blah. Because most people, uh, 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 because they're used to having a script in front of them. What would you say though, of your hopes for this project, Kim, working with Eileen and Judith and Donna and everybody, um, where do you want it to go? Well, twofold. I hope we do teach people how to make a film and they have a great time doing it. So they'll want to do it again. And then I hope we make a gazillion dollars and uh, P Swift benefits from that. So we can keep doing and keep growing more programs and um, just give everybody the experience and, and build careers. Eileen, you would, in your perfect world, if the money is raised and you're able to move forward, when do you see the shooting? When would you love to start this? Well, again, that would depend, but we're thinking possibly October, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah. we'll see, we'll see. What happens when actors are available and such, you kind of have to be flexible. Do you have your wish list of who you'd want? Your you know, sure, sure I do. Sure, I'm not telling them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure but I you do. have in your head who you'd want. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited that I've already snagged like, a, you know, a couple of the, of, the, of the most important characters with Judith and Donna and my sister-in-law, Nancy Vallon is playing a terrific role in it. Right, and that's She's such, a, 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 She's such a good actress. And she's so funny. She goes, really? And I go, of course I want you for this. She's a fantastic actress. I always tell her that. Anything Nancy's in, she elevates it. I think you guys know that when she started reading that role, you're like, wow, she was so good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she was great. She was great. So um, anything else, Judith, about being part of this project that you, you want to tell your fans? I have so much respect for, for this, for Kim, whom I've known for years, Eileen, whom I've known for years, but for her to get this thing off the road, because I've done so many of my own projects. I mean, you can sit around and wait for the phone to ring or have an audition or wait for them to call, and it's just not my style. Pretty, I mean, I've done my own uh, small films, you know, documentary things. I made one about fans, crazed fans. Um, when I first started in New York years ago, but I have so much respect for actors who do it for themselves, for women who are doing it for themselves, who take the initiative, who, who 
just sit down and have the discipline to write. And so I have a great deal of respect for that. So that's a big deal. And, and teaching, you know, members of women in film how to run a camera, how to be craft services. That's very important. Um, and uh, and it's, it, it, again, it just opens itself to the education because we've got wonderful theater schools down here where I've taught over the years. And um, so I like that. I like getting things from the ground up, starting and creating things. It's very exciting because most yeah. people don't have the, the manic energy to do that. And obviously Eileen does oh. and Kim. <laughs> we're manic uh oh manic we gotta be, yeah. gotta be crazy I mean, you know, also i think that i mean this is really true but I, I, what i also love about the project is that um it kind of turns it on its head everything that's been kind of typical about this business with being it so patriarchal uh we kind of flip it on every level from the like i said before from the terms of i'm um, co-directing um it's being produced by women in film strong uh female forward uh, script um, and also just the storyline itself we're kind of putting things on its head where the women are in more power positions where they're kind of in the positions that men have always been in in terms of younger co-stars and uh, it's kind of fun to be able to have um, the flexibility because we are the ones that are doing this we can do what we want yeah. and we're yeah. having fun yeah and Eileen you really have done so many things now in your career you know, I, you know, you did your, you've done all this acting, you've won all these awards, you now you're going to co-direct and then you've written this and done this book. Did you know, at what point did you know you were going to write, direct and do all these other things? When did you start? Never. I mean, <laughs> just things just kind of happened. I took advantage of, I took advantage of opportunities. With the books, I took advantage of an opportunity. My husband was writing a book with Bob Brandisi. He was staying at the house because he's from the Midwest while they were writing because my husband was horrible with computers. I said, Bob, what do you think about doing a mystery series based in the soap world? He said, write a, write a pitch and then we'll present it to Penguin. I did and we got the book deal. So, you know, she's kind of saying, hmm, maybe I can do that. I guess what it is with all of us, we're just not good at hearing no or you can't. We're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, Why we're fearless. We and yeah. also I think about the age thing, it's also not letting that dictate what you're supposed to be doing at this time in your life. Why not now? Yeah. Who's to say? I've always said, when I was asked to direct Equus a million years ago, and I said, Equus, you want me? I was teaching at College of the Desert, and this young actor came up and said, I want to do Equus. Would you direct it for me? And, I went, <laughs> and of course, it took me 10 minutes to say, sure. So I realized it's nice to be, for me, it's nice to be too stupid to know you can't do something. But I think, Eileen, you make a great do point. It. I think you make a great point. You know, there's there's a lot of um, ageism in our society and people, they feel they age out or you can't do this or you can't do that or you're, you're, you're only known as one way and that the older we get, you can't open that up. And that's been one of my platforms, as you know, has been like, you know, I'm doing music again now. Right. So like, I'm opening back up. I'm saying like, I'm a pop R&B singer. I am a singer songwriter. Yeah, I know I'm this old, but okay, so I may not get a record label deal that the 18 to 25 year old kids are, but I certainly can, you know, put out music like them. And I certainly can, you know, do that. And I don't want age to define me. And I think that's what's so important to all of us to kind of like, that's why I so appreciate what Eileen does, because you're constantly pushing the edge and you're reinventing different I don't even ages. really feel that way. It's not like I'm going to push the edge today. No, 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 but I, I'm just being I know, know, I know, but I, it's, it's a kind of a weird symbiotic thing that just kind of happened. It's like, I, I, when I was actually much younger, I realized there's this invisible they that for some reason is making the rules on my personal life. I'll speak for myself. I don't know who they are, but I'm listening to them. And I was like, why am I listening to them? Why aren't I just doing my own thing? So it was more about, not giving my power away to this invisible thing that I've, you know, society or whatever. You have to accept it though, because you're going to hear all sorts of crap. It, it's up to you whether or not you reject it or accept it and just move through the doubts and the insecurities because I'm sure we're all fraught with them. Everybody is. Let's take a deep breath and go, you know, what the hell? And by the way, my stepson is a genius writer and very inspirational. And he wrote something a few weeks ago that made me help me make a decision. He goes, what would you do if you weren't afraid of failing? This makes me emotional. It really hit me. I went, wow, you have to remind yourself. Everybody does at every single step of their lives. What would you do if you weren't afraid of failing? 
you'd be free. Anything you want. You would be That's free. I said, for me, it's it nice free. to be too yeah. stupid. Oh, I can't do that. Who the hell cares? What the hell? Who the hell cares if you fail anyway? Who cares? Right? Yeah, who yeah, cares? Who cares? Exactly. I'm getting teary. Anyway, so it's all good. Uh, also, your your son just graduated, right? From oh. high school, yeah. How was that? Oh my gosh, I saw the picture and I was like, you guys, I was like, wait. He was, yeah, not, he's six two, right? Yeah, he just two. Like, oh my graduated. gosh. You must have been a proud mama there. Right? I know. We we're all really proud. I mean, especially considering what they went through, that one of the commencement speakers said that the class of 2021 has spent the least amount of time in a classroom of any class ever from Malibu because of the fire. They were out of school for two months then in his sophomore year. They were out for a few months during junior year because of COVID and almost in the entirety of senior year. So it's been really challenging in ways that we could never have predicted. Yeah, so whatever. So he gets to sleep in. It's like, what, 11 40? He's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you can have a couple of weeks just to sleep, whatever. So, Kim, you've really had quite a, a career. You know, you're this president of the Palm Springs Women in Film and you've done all this. And, and you know, have you, I'm sure you've faced your struggles too as a woman in this business. I mean, how do you think it's changed? Do you think things are evolving and changing or do you still find the same? Yeah, issue? I think. I think they're definitely changing. I personally have not had that many issues like Eileen. I don't think about things like that. I just plow through things and just get them done. And I made my first movie as a producer at the age of 50. So, I mean, I have that fearless factor thing that I think we all have. And so I, I really haven't had any difficulties. However, I, I do see the difference in people demanding inclusion. And I think it's important because I think we forget sometimes, you know, and, and it's like, wow, we have just such a colorful world out there. And it's so much fun to include as many diverse people as possible. So, um, Maybe. so Judy, then, wrapping up, what do you think? Why did, why will the soap fans love to see you in this? Because it's me. <laughs> No, that's, that's <laughs> fine. No, that's right. Yeah, uh, I think, well, I just hopefully, yes, they'll love seeing another facet of Judith. Uh, super fan, super fan, Judith. Super fan, super fan, adoring um, Eileen Davidson. And if yeah. they reflect on Young and the Restless State, but they hate each other. <laughs> and now she's like, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. So uh, um, I think fans, uh, whether Eileen decides to broaden it out and include other actors from other mediums or just stick with soap operas, which is also wonderful. The fans will so appreciate the little- The inside. The twists and turns and the inside things like, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right across the hall from where Y&R is shot. So a lot of familiar things that will make um, the audience feel very comfortable. And, and at ease, so it's not going into a big strange thing. Okay, and Eileen, what would you say to uh, the fans that follow you uh, that they should look forward to this and why they should be excited about the project? Well, just like Judith said, I mean, it is behind the scenes. It is, uh, you get a little peek behind the curtain to what goes on and what our lives are like, you know, what the actors' lives are like with with the, with certain things. And, and um, also it's got murder, I mean. <laughs> That's sex I, and murder. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, I sex have to murder. Love, I love true crime. I love true crime, and I've always loved true crime. So for me to combine soap opera behind the scenes with some sex and some fun, and then true crime was like for me a perfect fit. So it's it's just it's fun. It's fun on so many different levels. Plus, you'll get to say see a lot of your favorite actors in a different way, casting cool. against type. Right, so I will put up the Chiron here, but everybody can donate donations to the Filmmakers Lab. And again, it's an educational program, nonprofit, tax write-off, all that good things to help get Dial M for Murder off the ground. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, Michael. Thank, thank you, you, you Michael. Thank you, Judith. It's so nice to meet you, Kim. You too. All right, and we'll we'll pick this back up when the uh, when the film is coming out or the series or yes. whatever this is, all right? All right, my love. Thank you so much.